Hi, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Cole TV for another midweek show. On the show this evening, we've got action and reaction from the Sutton game last night and also we've got action and reaction from the under-18s in the FA Youth Cup as they took on Newcastle United up at St James Park. But before all that, um, we've got a statement that's just been released from the club and from Colchester chairman Robbie Cowling regarding the head coach's position uh, and Hayden Mullins, and it is as follows. Following the recent poor run of results, the difficult decision has been made to make a change and relieve Hayden Mullins and Alex Dyer of their respective roles at Colchester United. I want to make it clear that the responsibility for our current league position lies with everyone involved, both on and off the pitch, and I include myself in that. And everyone remaining must shoulder some of the responsibility individually and collectively. I'd like to thank Hayden for ensuring our survival last season and thank both he and Alex for their hard work this season and I wish them the best of luck for the future. Since I made this difficult decision on Tuesday night, I've asked Wayne Brown to take charge as the interim head coach and he has agreed to do that. I hope that you, the supporters, will get fully behind Wayne and the squad for the packed schedule of matches in the immediate future. As Robbie says, a difficult decision to make, uh, but let's get behind Wayne and the lads from now on and let's start on Saturday. Back to the show and a Warrior Edwards scoring for us last night against Sutton. Let's see what he had to say or hear what he had to say when he first joined us here at Colchester. Welcome to Colchester United. Uh, how did the move come around and uh, how quick has it all happened this? It's, it's been one hell of a week. Um, yeah, it happened very quickly. Um, yeah, I just heard from Bristol City, Brian, that Colchester are interested and obviously I want to come here, get some games and really get um, a grip in my football and um, start playing loads of games. Yeah, and I suppose you just know sometimes football is like that, especially in transfer windows in August and January. Yeah, no, definitely. I remember last year at Grimsby, I had like a, a day, a day notice that I was going up up north and that's hope, you know, it's normal uh, for things like this to happen. And obviously that, that experience, you you hope that that'll help in your time at Colchester? Yeah, no, definitely. I've been to two loans now and every one of them, it's been a great experience. You know, I've taken many things on board and yeah, um, hopefully I can, all my experience that I've got, can show here. Yeah, and obviously you're going to get to know the lads and have to get to know them very quickly because yeah. we've got games coming up thick and fast, nah. starting with the game at Sutton. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. I can't, I can't wait to meet everyone. Um, I know a few people, Noah, um, and there's a guy who used to be at SAE, but I don't really know, an older pro. Yeah. But yeah, I can't wait to meet everyone and get started. Yeah, and I presume you, you know how culture has got on so far and know that all the uh, players and the manager and the fans and everyone at the club wants to pick up in form in the second half of the season. So you presume you just want to be a big part of uh, us climbing the table. Yeah, no, definitely. Colchester shouldn't be ready on the table. And it's about time we really pick up our season. And, you know, we're only like halfway through the season. We've got loads of games and I'm sure we'll, we'll be up there. And for any Colchester fans that don't know much about you, what, what do you think you'll bring to the table? Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a creative, fast, pacey winger. I like to get him behind and yeah, score a few goals and assists and yeah, I think they'll enjoy me because I'm, I'm an entertaining player. A Walra there wanting to hit the ground run and he certainly did that against Sutton last night, scoring after just three minutes. Let's take a look at that game with the rest of the goals and the key moments from last night.
So a goal scoring debut for young forward Awara Edwards, who joined the U's, joined us on Monday on loan from Bristol City. Another new signing made his debut last night in the starting 11 was Amir Hughes. We caught up with him after the game as he joined BBC Essex and this is what he had to say. That's a tough one to take on your debut, isn't it? Yeah, um, tough one. I mean, I think we deserve more, um, but we got to you know, stop conceding, especially eight goals. Um, so a tough one to take, yeah. Coming into the club and, and given a number of players who you, who you would know and the, and the experienced pros that, you, that, that you've come into as well, are you, are you surprised to see the team where it is? Yeah, definitely. There's it's a really good squad. Um, I think it's just those margins, and um, in both boxes, we just got to, you know, keep working and work on those margins because it's a fine line in football, as we all know. You got yourselves ahead on, on on two occasions. There were a couple of other chances in there as well where you might have extended the lead too. Did did you ever feel that you were in control of the game or not? I think they. They scored um, at awkward times, um, but um, yeah, I don't think we felt under massive threat. Uh, they're good at what they do, no doubt. But um, again, it's just—I think they had like I don't know how many shots they had, but it felt like they were winning um, all the chances they had. So just got to become more efficient at, at both ends. And, I think the results will come. Uh, like I said, it's a great group of lads, been really welcoming, and I think there's definitely talent and ability in the squad. What about the, the belief and the morale and, and, the, and the mood that you've come into as well? Because it's, it's a poor run that the team, team is on. We, the, the head coach says he doesn't want to change the mood at the training ground, so you wouldn't know whether it'd been a win or a loss from the previous game. But it must be tough as footballers, isn't it? If, if you, know, you put all that in and yet still you can't quite get over the line. Um, yeah, I think credit to the gaffer for that because that's the last thing you need is someone being up down here there with results. I think we just got to focus on what we can control, which is working hard in the week, working hard in training, looking forward to the next game because that's all we can control. So we'll learn, try and learn from mistakes today, what we could have done better and then put that towards the next few weeks, which is all we can do. What about you then? I mean. <laughs> been out for, 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 for quite a while now so, so how has this all come about that you've ended up joining Colchester? Um, I know the gaffer previously um, from Birmingham I, yeah, yeah and I know Al as well so um, spoke to them and you know I've, I'm really happy to, to join and get my all for the club um, so I'm looking forward and I know it seems like from your questions etc that it's all doom and gloom but I don't see it that way mm. I think um, there's definitely room you know we've got to look forward and the only way is up yeah, because from your point of view great to be back involved in the programme great, great to be back playing isn't it yeah it is Yeah, it's been a while um, but um, no, I'm glad to be back and um, glad to be playing football and with a great group of lads as well so, so where have you been what, what's, what, what's, what's gone on <laughs> good question I mean, I'd probably like to say it was a little sabbatical um, where I felt I needed time to reassess mm. what I wanted to do. Um, and I've worked hard off the scenes, um, behind the scenes, sorry, um, on my fitness. And, you know, I felt it was the right time to get back into football. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> my front journey is the same in football. But um, nice. No, I'm really happy to be to be back playing. Yeah, I mean, lots of people take sabbaticals in their job. They don't <laughs> footballers, but but is that, that that sort of time away and that time sort of thinking sort of um, reignited your your desire to get back and, and, and play? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, yeah. It was um, it was definitely um, the right thing to do, and I'm glad I, I followed my uh, my instincts and did it because um, it was time that I needed uh, to reassess and. And uh, I'm happy at where, where I'm at now. Because the world of football is it's a treadmill, isn't it? And people say you're very fortunate, very lucky to be professional footballers. But in the, the day, it's a job, mm. and it's a treadmill. It's pretty incessant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's a great job. I mean, there's so much that's you know that you could say are negatives, but it's a great job, and we are lucky. Um, so we've got to take the rough with the smooth. Mm. Um, you know, keep perspective and, and keep trying your hardest.
and no doubt, despite the situation that Colchester are in, you've, you've got a perspective on it, haven't you? Yeah, I think it's it's hard. You know, we get emotional, and it's results driven sport. But we need everyone behind us. You know, fans tonight were great, coming in their numbers, um, and we need everyone pulling in the same direction um, to to keep, get some momentum going and win some games. And I think that will come. Disappointing result, of course, but I must say a big uh, shout out, a big well done to 260 plus travelling fans who made their way to Sutton to cheer us on down there. I uh, didn't get a chance to get down there myself, but listened on the audio on the iFollow. But one game I did get to, I made the journey up to Newcastle, to St James's Park, to watch the FA Youth Cup tie, our under 18s taking on Newcastle. Of course, the under-18s beating Arsenal in the round before. That gave them the right, earned them the right, should I say, to play up there under the floodlights on Monday evening. Let's take a look at the action and then we'll hear from youth coach Liam Bailey.
Liam, great experience for the lads, uh, but unfortunately uh, out of the Youth Cup. Yeah, disappointing with the with the result. I think um, the standards that the, the players have set over the season, they they could have shown more tonight. Um, although saying that, I think we did create some some really good chances to to put the game to bed sort of in the first half at the end. Thank you, Terry. And then just towards the end, we had a couple of chances as well. Yeah. The beginning of the game, do you think we were a little bit nervous at the beginning? Yeah, definitely. Definitely started slow. Um, Giving away a sloppy, a sloppy goal, um, which didn't help. Although I did actually think the goal kicked us into a little bit of life. We had a little bit more of the, with the ball and started playing our passing game. But yeah, the slow start definitely killed us. Yeah, but in in the end, the lads did get to grips with it and did get back in the game. And like you say, created good chances, especially that one before half time. Yeah, I think if you look at the game as a whole, I think we created more clear cut chances. We got in behind their defence, probably more with an open sight of goal. But just I think not calm enough in front of goal, panicked a little bit and yeah there was some good chances. Overall a good cup run and uh, you know good experience for the lads both beating Arsenal and coming here despite being defeated. Yeah listen if you would have said at the beginning of the season we're going to beat Arsenal and come and play at St James's Park it, the experience that the lads have had is, is, is excellent. Um, they'll create memories for life, they'll look back at this in years to come if they, they don't become footballers but what we're really hoping is this experience takes them to the next level and We've got players that come and play here week in, week out as they get older. Yeah. And obviously the, part of their development in these games is the difference of winning and losing and making sure you know it is all about the winning in the cup competitions. Yeah, listen, there's some, there's some disappointed bodies in the, in the dressing room, but I think they need this disappointment every week, when they, every day when they step on the training pitch. They, they need to be disappointed if they go home and they don't train properly or they, they haven't quite been set meeting the standards that they've set so they need to use this disappointment and really really focus on making a career in the game yeah and that career hopefully for some of them will come at Colts United in the next year six months 18 months but they've just got to keep going and, and progress into the 23s 100 percent. we've got a lot of boys that have played in the 23s already we've got a lot of boys that have been in and around the first team Sampson Frankie Ryan they've regularly training with with the first team which is good and they need to kick on and then we need to get the next batch after them playing regularly in the 23s, but definitely a chance and we want to see him playing in the first team at Colchester. Liam, pleased with some aspects of the game there, but also looking at situations that could be improved for the young side. Whatever way you look at it, it was a fantastic run and achievement to get to the fourth round of the competition and you could see the relief in the Newcastle camp at the final whistle. They knew they'd been in a game and uh, yeah, 3-2, win just about scrape through and show, I must say the young lads being 3-0 down to come back to 3 to show great character resilience and they never stop running and trying right to the final whistle uh, it's a good it's a good way for the young players to show what they're all about and the academy and how it's developing here uh, they were led on the night by skipper Ryan Lowe and he caught up and spoke to Andy Carmichael after the game Ryan went incredibly close tonight but unfortunately it just wasn't to be yeah, I know, you know, the lads put the effort in at the end, we put, we throw everything at it, but unfortunately it weren't enough tonight. I think we gave ourselves a mountain to climb, being 3 nil down, but we, we kept going at it, created chances. Maybe we could have kept the ball a bit better, but we did give it our all and unfortunately it weren't enough tonight. It was a terribly unlucky first goal to concede. It, it didn't help that you were trailing at the break, but the second half performance must give you a lot of encouragement going into the, to the yeah. rest of the season. We know what we're capable of and we had a game plan to, to really come at them today and to, to get in their faces to, to play to play our normal game and unfortunately tonight I think maybe the first half let us down and gave ourselves a big big mountain to climb up in the second half especially after we started well and uh, yeah just unfortunate. You've done yourselves really proud to come to a stadium like this and, and leave disappointed that you haven't taken anything from the game. How, how does that make you feel going into the rest of the campaign? Well, there's a lot of positives to come out of it. I think we, we can all be proud of how far we've come looking back at the Arsenal game and starting all the way back from Bugsbrook. We've come a long way and I think a lot of us have done immensely well and hopefully we can carry on in the rest of the league in the future. It's been an excellent journey in the FA Youth Cup. What, what can you take from, from the four games that you've had in this tournament? Um, we can take a lot. That Arsenal game was a brilliant, one of the best nights of my life. Everyone loved it around the club. And obviously playing at, at this ground here, 
it's, it's a, a great experience. Looking back at it in a few days' time, I think we'll really take it in how 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 far we've come and how much of a, an achievement this is. And the home fans, there was 1,200 of them here tonight. They made it a little bit hostile for you at times. How did that affect your mentality? How did that affect your play and your and your teammates' play? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it affected us. I think we, we kept to it. Obviously, the fans were getting on our cases after scoring a couple of goals back, but I think we've, we've just got to deal with it. It's something that's going to be part and parcel of life for certain of us. So being, ignoring the crowd, just staying calm, staying focused, and yeah, uh, that would be, you know, hopefully some of us will be playing in a, a much bigger crowd. So, yeah. And you'll be able to take a lot of this experience going forward to the rest of the season. Where do you see yourself personally getting in towards the end of the season? I, I, I don't know, I'm just trying to keep playing week by week, see how it goes. It's been going well for me personally at the minute, so I've just got to keep going, got to keep pushing. You don't, just because I've played and captain the side doesn't mean anything. I've got to keep working hard in training, got to keep giving everything. And that's, that's the sort of person I am. That was the youth team captain, Ryan Lowe, talking after an epic FA Cup youth tie at Newcastle, which we narrowly lost 3-2. As I said earlier, the academy is a big part of what we do at the youth, and we should be really proud of, of these young lads that are coming through the academy. Hopefully we'll see a good few of them progressing to the first team over the next few years or so. Hopefully we'll see you all again next week for the midweek show here. I'll be back next Wednesday. If you do want to contact us for anything, of course, it's media at colchesterunited.net. If you are travelling up to Salford, safe journey to all the travelling fans to and from the game. And I'll see you next Wednesday for the midweek show. Until then, it's goodbye for now.